Welcome back to Cigar Time, the world's most viewed cigar show. How do you all feel about that? Pretty damn Excellent. good. Excellent. Yeah, Great. It's awesome. I mean, you're 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 stars in your own right, or at least in your own in mind. mind. At yeah, least, absolutely. absolutely. Definitely in my absolutely. mind. I mean, has anybody come up to you for autographs? Yeah, absolutely. No, but I have got busted in other stores. No. Uh, <laughs> really? Yeah. That's awesome. I got to tell I, you a funny story before we start the show, and we will actually start the show. I went to get a haircut. No, no, no jokes, please. <laughs> hey, which twice, one? A year, twice a year I get a haircut. Well, you don't which one? Me getting a haircut. Yeah, which one? Okay. <laughs> And my barber, God bless him, my barber says to me, I saw you on television last night. I said, yeah, did you like the show? He said, yeah, the babe at the end was pretty hot. You know, I don't know much about cigars, but I found it interesting for about five minutes. I said, until she crossed her legs, right? Uh, that's right. Well, that was, a, you know fun, other that was a funny story, Mike. Do you Mike. know other cigar stores watch our show in their store? Really? It's on, yeah. Cool. We had oh, a customer. Cool. A customer went to one of our competitors, and um, they had our show on they, their television. Why would they not have it on, though? I, mean, I know it's a great show. It's very informative. Yes. Do they turn off the sound when we say we have nine locations? We have nine. <laughs> <laughs> no. no. Well, I thought that was pretty cool. To all of you other cigar shops in the Philadelphia metropolitan area, <laughs> Eat your we heart thank out. you for promoting us. And <laughs> if we could ever do the same in return, call him. <laughs> No, seriously, thank you very much. Well, I, I guess today we should uh, probably smoke something, and I yeah. I'm feeling like an Alex Bradley American classic. What do you think? Alex. Sure. Let's I smoke think the, I, let's I smoke the big Alex. one, the oh, Gordo. Cool. My favorite. Yeah, I know. Where would I get I one of those? Why, don't, why doesn't the lovely <laughs> Miss Tia tell us all about the Alex Bradley American classic Gordo? Gordo. The wrapper is a hundred... Tell Gordo. us about the Alec. 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 Brad. Yeah. Alex. Alex. Was he saying it wrong? Yeah. The Alec Bradley American classic Gordo. The wrapper is in Honduran, Connecticut, which is kind of interesting. The binder is Nicaraguan, and the filler is Nicaraguan. There's only one size, which is the Gordo. Oh, what other size would there be, right? It comes in other sizes. Well, you this only, is the one we're doing. Well, this today. is what we're doing. I thought it came in other sizes, like a Churchill. Yeah, it, it comes does. in all sizes. I don't think I've seen the Robusto, though. Yeah, it does. Yeah, we have. You guys only we sent have. the Gordo and the Churchill. But as long as I have the Gordo, I don't care. The taste profile are sweet nuts. Sweet notes of nuts and touch of coffee and wood. <laughs> say that real fast, five What did five. I say? Sweet nuts? <laughs> yeah, sweet nuts. <laughs> Cashews. Uh, sweet nuts and yes. wood. Good. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, this review is going to be... Good thing I didn't say that together. We got this sweet nuts of wood. <laughs> what kind of wood, Oak? <laughs> well, at least you didn't get the moose dropping. All right. Oh, God. Now it's time for me to taste this. <laughs> wow, this thing's huge. It takes all my... It you draws think. really nice, though. It does. I see you got a different lighter today. I do. Yeah, I like it. Thank you. Very nice. Which we sell in our stores. Nice, really good lighter. I do. All right. Just Another half hour watching us sit around smoking cigars. <laughs> <laughs> How about it? Why? Well, I, I guess when in doubt, always let's go to plan B. Paul. Oh. <laughs> Paul. Paul has... Uh, He's uh, quit everything and joined the bands. You have joined the bands. To make uh, a band. Let's hear it for the bands. Actually, I'm going to talk about the golden age of cigar bands, or cigar rings, uh, or cigar ribbons, as the case may be. Uh, of course, most of the cigars that you ever smoke come with some kind of band or ribbon on it. You may wonder how that came to be the case. Uh, going back a few hundred years, there are actually a number of legends about where cigar bands came from. Uh, one of the oldest is that the Empress of Russia, Catherine the Great, was a heavy cigar smoker, and she smoked a lot of cigars. Um, I knew that was coming. <laughs> yeah. I felt it coming. Oh my God. Actually, uh, just, just so everybody knows, in case you hadn't figured it out by now, we are not trained professionals. Especially me. Um, are, I'm sorry, are you welding over there, or are you <laughs> lighting a cigar? <laughs> That's actually really well. <laughs> it's a party Cat, game. Sorry. It's a party Catherine the Great smoked 20 cigars a day. <laughs> and she was concerned, well, at least as the legend goes, she was concerned that the people would find her to be too indulgent if they saw all the nicotine stains on her fingers. So the legend has it, she requested that the factory in Cuba that made her cigars wrap each cigar in a little silk ribbon that 
she could then hold and keep the nicotine off her fingers. Evidently, they didn't have running water or soap. Yeah, apparently. Well, not. Yeah, in Russia, uh, two hundred years, two hundred years are you ago. Now or back then? Well, <laughs> if, if you go to Sochi now. Yeah, it's not there. <laughs> anyway, uh, the second legend has it that during the Victorian era in England, when everybody was very, very proper, uh, and men wore white gloves to dinner when they would have their after-dinner cigar, the tobacco would stain their white gloves, and that was theoretically not acceptable either. Uh, so they requested that cigars have a, a nice ribbon on it. Uh, there was even a theory proposed by uh, Zeno Davidoff, who said maybe inferior cigars got a ribbon on it to hold the cigar together. Uh, although subsequently people decided that that wasn't the case because it was originally the more expensive cigars that had the ribbons, not the inexpensive ones. Anyway, there are all sorts of ideas and stories about why cigars ever got bands in the first place, but there's no mystery about where real bands printed with names and so forth came from. Uh, th and to understand that, we have to go back to the 1830s, uh, and we can go to Cuba for this story. Well, Cuba and Europe. Uh, in the 1830s, the counterfeiting, this might sound familiar, but the counterfeiting of Cuban cigars was a major epidemic throughout Europe. In fact, most of the history buffs say that at that time, three out of every four Cub supposedly Cuban cigars sold in Europe were fake. And three were- Three out of every four? Three out of every four were wow. fake. Only one in four were actual Havanas. Wow. That's a lot. Um, yeah, a lot. That got to be real old to the guys in Cuba pretty quick. And there was one guy by the name of Gustavo Bach who decided that he had a solution to the problem. And the solution was he put a little strip of paper around every one of his cigars and just signed his name on the strip of paper. And then would travel around Europe telling people the only way to be sure you're getting a legitimate Cuban and the best of them is to look for one signed by me. Mm. Uh, so in that time, the bands were very simple. They were more or less a straight rectangular piece of paper with a signature on it. Uh, Shortly thereafter, people started putting a little more information on it. Sometimes in a bigger factory, the roller would sign it, not the owner of the factory. Um, but within about 10 years, every cigar in Cuba had some sort of band on it. And the design and production of those bands became a bigger and bigger business and a more and more complex undertaking. Uh, and that was true right up until the late 1800s. In the late 1800s, a few interesting things began to happen. We talked a little bit about this last week when we were discussing boxes. Uh, a whole bunch of very sophisticated printers came to the United States from Germany around this time, and they brought with them the brand new, very complex printing process called uh, mass stone lithography. And just as they were printing uh, exotic box labels, they began to produce very exotic bands uh, with all kinds of uh, very colorful, in-depth, uh, interesting graphic bands. Now, none of these are antique bands. I should tell you that antique bands are actually so collectible that some of them go for thousands of dollars a piece. Mm -hmm. But these are representative stylistically of how complex and interesting some of these bands got to be. Now, this started to be a serious problem in the major cities of the United States because by 1890 or so, people were smoking two billion cigars a year in the United States. And that was two billion of these guys in the streets, tossed in the streets, in the gutter all the time. In fact, the mayors of several major cities in the United States got together in 1890 to complain to the cigar industry that cigar bans in the street were the second greatest source of litter behind horse manure. 
<laughs> which before cars was a pretty major problem. They were probably all Democrats, too. Probably. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, well, politics aside, um, <laughs> collecting bands began to be another tremendous undertaking because there were so many thousands, and we talked about this last time, there were over one and a half million brands of cigars on the market. Uh, the, the bands were so interesting and all different than each other that people began collecting them and saving them the way people did, do baseball cards now or comic books. Um, that idea reached its peak in uh, about 1900 when the American Cigar Company instituted a catalog for cigar band collections and said you could buy any of the merchandise in the catalog if you had enough bands. And to give you an idea of what things sold for at that time, for 50 bands you could get a set of silver spoons, which would mean for me I'd have hundreds of spoons <laughs> yeah, in no time at all. Is that, like Is that real silver? Yeah, it, it was a predecessor to S and H green stamps. Cigar wow. bands were the f like the first non-currency currency so for I, collecting. I'm guessing that the political people could not ban the bands. They could not ban <laughs> ban the bands. Uh, uh, for thirty-two thousand bands. You could buy a horse-drawn buggy with rubber tires, but without the horse. No. <laughs> what good is it? 32,000 bands. For wow. 40,000 bands, you could get a bird's-eye maple bedroom set, hand-carved and assembled. That's a lot of cigars, though. Mattress or no mattress? Um, I'm not sure. But for 180,000 bands, according to their catalog, you could get a Steinway Grand Piano. Wow. So there was a bunch of people out in the street picking up cigar Pick, bands. Run, <laughs> running around behind guys smoking cigars, waiting for them to flick the butt so they could grab the band. So they weren't recycling aluminum, they were recycling the band. Yes. <laughs> so bands went through a lot of evolution. Um, for most of the 20th century, cigar bands were pretty straightforward and simplistic. After the, the, the so-called golden age of design uh, passed, uh, most cigar bands looked more or less like this. Pretty simple, mm -hmm. usually one color. The real goal was to keep them inexpensive. Uh, that changed again during the cigar boom in the 1990s when many of the brands that you might recognize today began leaning again towards more and more complex and elaborate bands. So you have ones like this one, the La Gloria Cubana. Love her. Uh, this is one of my favorite cigars and one of my favorite brands, the uh, Perdomo 20th Anniversary is a beautiful band. Uh, maybe one of the most beautiful of them all is the San Cristobal band. So much color and so elaborate. And probably the best known fancy cigar band in the business is the band from the Opus X. It is a nice band. It is a, nice it is a very nice, nice band. I'll give it that. Yeah. And so it's, it's come all the way back around to using many colors, using uh, embossing, using lots of gold foil, which by the way is usually real gold, even on these cigar bands. And uh, it reached, this modern version reached its absolute peak with a line of cigars sold only in China, uh, made in South America. The band, I wish I had a sample of it. The band is about four inches wide. Wow. Uh, it's deeply embossed, and the whole thing is real gold leaf. The cost to the manufacturer is close to $6 each for the wow. bands. Paul, if you want. Wow. Armando Ramos cigar. If you want, <laughs> for the next show, I have one of those bands. I don't have the cigar, but I have the band. I have the cigar. Okay. You'll be able to show it. That would be was fantastic. Was it Armando Ramos? Cigar? Yes, it was. Uh, it was. The cigar was made by Armando Ramos for distribution in China. The cigar sold for about ninety dollars a piece at retail. And what was the name of the cigar? It's it's a long. It's not the Lucky Eight. It's a no. long. It's this was even higher end than that. It was the Reserva de Presidente. Wow. And it was actually the the president of the Communist Party gave them as gifts, and then it became. A bigger thing than that Ooh. over there. 
I still have one of those cigars. Who? That was his name. Who? Who? Yeah, who? Okay. Still has who? who? Who was the president of China? <laughs> I don't know. What's on, what's who? on second? First base. The president. Who? The president. <laughs> Uh, the last thing I want to mention to you is that it is only us in America that call them cigar bands. Uh, they're called cigar rings. In Spanish, they're called uh, anillas, which means ring, or occasionally cintas, which means ribbon. But we call them bands because you can listen to the band. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's all I have. I think it, I think that we. Um, I think it was way back on the radio show, we talked about the marketing and how much the, the packaging, um, the presentation, the box, and the cigar ring, um, what a great marketing tool it was because people really buy with their eyes. Right. Um, they really do. I mean, I, I, I actually started drinking some, um, uh, like, I guess, rarer kinds of beer. A couple of guys at the store got me turned on to it, and I went to the store. I'm like, oh, I'm going to yeah. buy some of this stuff. And I found myself looking at it. I'm like, you know what? I'm just like the people in the cigar store. I'm like, yeah. I wouldn't buy anything because like, I don't, I don't know anything about it. I'm just yeah. looking at the labels, and yes. I can't make a choice based on that. But that's what a lot of people do. Uh -huh. Paul, do. what's the difference between a flat band and a grave band? I mean, maybe you could take a minute and explain well, that. Well, yeah, actually, I could. Um, bear with me for a second here. Well, this is a this is a flat band. It's rectangular. And it's not embossed at all. It's just flat paper printed with colored ink. Part of what makes distinctive cigar bands so distinctive is that they're cut out in very elaborate patterns. And this is done with cutting dies that have to be custom made for each design or each shape of cigar band. So that's, that's one part of it. The other part of it is they have to make embossing dies. So aside from printing plates for each color. They have to make plates that actually press a three-dimensional element into the band so that mm -hmm. you can see how the light hits it, you can feel it, and you know that it's three-dimensional. And then, of course, there is stamping on actual gold foil or other metallic foils onto the band to give it glitter. And what's the difference between, I guess, this, this cigar has two different bands on it. In order to make their cigars look more distinctive, some companies will put a, an additional band on the foot that's at the bottom of the cigar. Another reason to put a foot band on a cigar, especially if it's not a cigar that comes in cellophane, is that the foot band helps protect the edge of the cigar from getting chipped. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you, if you look at some of these bands, they're actually multiple bands. They're composite bands. So this band, for example, is actually, um, I don't want to hurt the cigar, but you can see there's, there's actually two bands up, up top. Mm -hmm. um, so bit by bit, the more elaborate and complex they could make the number of pieces of paper and what they look like and what's on them, the more they do. Because like you said, people buy with their eyes. Well, buy with and their eyes. when you talked about one of the original reasons for it was counterfeit, and I think um, you mentioned the last show, Rob, the last year, Padron, the last episode, yeah. right. Padron uh, serial numbers. Yeah, uh, the, they put the, serial numbers on the 64s. Did they do it on the 26 or no? I can't remember. I think they do. I think, I think they do. on the 26. All, all the anniversaries they put on, yeah. they don't want, to, uh, don't want them counterfeited. Yeah. So, so multi-purpose. Yeah. All right. Well, I, I think. Uh, and it keeps your white gloves white. Keeps your white gloves white. Yes. If you're wearing them. Yes. Next time I wear white gloves, I'll remember that. Thank you. Paul, that was very informative, as always. Thank we you. We look forward that was next fun. week to what uh, edification you will bring to us. God knows. We love when you <laughs> pontificate. Next All week right. is nails in cigar boxes. Nails in cigar boxes. <laughs> <laughs> nail okay. to nail or not to nail? To no. nail or not to nail? Not. Not the nails. Not nail. Not nail. Nobody, nobody, if nobody likes the nail. you're a box manufacturer and you're putting cigars, Stop don't the nail. Nail. Don't don't nail, nail those nails boxes nails shut. In the boxes. <laughs> you right. end up with all kinds of scars. I think it's time yeah. to uh, go around the table and talk about our Alex Bradley American Classic Gordo. Say that real fast ten times. Gordo, Gordo, Gordo. And we'll start the with the lovely thing. Miss T. Uh, this cigar is really tasty. I mean, it's really tasty. And I think maybe it's because of that Honduran Connecticut. I'm not a big fan of Connecticut wrappers, but this is really tasty. Plus, it has a Nicaraguan binder and filler, so you can't go wrong with that. Um, the construction's beautiful. I think everything in the Alec Bradley line is a good cigar. I don't think they put out a bad cigar. I don't think I've ever smoked 
an olive barley that I did not like. I like all they of them. They do a good job. Um, I do get some of the nuts and the wood. I'm not sure about the coffee. I'm not a big coffee drinker, so I don't really know what coffee tastes like. But um, I'm definitely getting the nuts and the wood. Very, Rob? very tasty. So. Rob? Uh, you know, I agree. I don't get any of the coffee taste either. Yeah. I do get the wood and the nuts. Um, it is very Oops. smooth. It's a very smooth cigar. Um, I'm not a fan of Connecticut uh, wrappers, but this is, like Tia said, very, very tasty. Mm -hmm. So I like that. Paul? I find that it's a smooth cigar. It's on the mild side, but with lots of flavor. Yeah, it doesn't fine. get in your face. It's just pleasant and rich, and mm -hmm. I, I definitely get the sweetness and the wood out of it. I should also mention that I checked with Uncle Max, our resident alcoholic <laughs> expert, <laughs> expert, and uh, I asked him about what you might pair this cigar with, and his suggestion was if you were going to have a beer, it should be a classic lager. Uh, like a, a Sam Adams Boston Lager would be a really good example. It would have just enough flavor to stand up with it. And on, on the spirit side, his suggestion was a rum and coke, or as they call it in Cuba, a Cuba Libre. Libra. Oh. Scott? Um, very nice cigar. Um, mm -hmm. Everybody said most of what I, you know, what I thought. It's, I think it's very smooth. I agree it's a mild cigar. I think it's something that you would go really well with coffee in the morning. Um, I get some creaminess from it. Um, I'm definitely getting the sweetness and the nuttiness. Um, yeah. And it's got a really nice, sh it's, it's for a Ecuadorian Connecticut, it's got a really nice sheen Shake, on the yeah. It's a really Honduran nice. Honduran. 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 I'm sorry. It's Honduran. Yeah. Honduran Connecticut. It's got a really nice sheen to it. And anyway. I like it anyway. Amazing. Right. Yeah. As for me, I find this a little bit on the higher side of mild, lower side of medium, somewhere in there. Uh, beautiful wrapper. I do like Connecticut, and this is a very good Connecticut. Uh, has a lot of good smoke. Being a very thick ring, it's a 60 ring cigar. It's a very complex smoke, so you get to really taste the, the different taste within the cigar. As typically thicker cigars, wider the ring gauge, the more complex you, you generally will get in a decent cigar. So uh, I really like it. It's got a very nice draw. Yeah, it's yeah, a very, nice. a lot of smoke. Check draw out my ash. Yeah, beautiful ash. We'd Draws love to easy. check out the ash. <laughs> right, I think it's time to rate it. Let's start with Paul. Uh, I'd have to give it a 4.5. And I'm not usually a big fan of milder cigars. Yeah, you don't cigars. like the mild cigars, yeah. 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 I, I, I do I like stuff all across the board. I do like mild cigars, but the, it's not only is it mild, but it has a lot of flavor to it. So I, I would go with a 4.5 as well. I think our mystery smoker would really like this one. Yeah, he would. He likes mild. Yeah, it's a sorry one. Shame what happened to him. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a mystery. mystery. It's a mystery. <laughs> Tune in next week, fans. Oh, that's all. Uh, Miss Tia? I'm going to go 4.5. I'm not going to mess Holy with that number. Michael. No comment on the band? I was going to say, oh, we I had did, a whole I, show I, about bands. Oh, I did There's say whole, I love the band. a whole band. show about bands. You I, didn't say anything? I, I love the band. The band is very classic. It is. It's a very nice band. Yeah. Rob? Um, it even says classic. I think I'm getting no, Rob into classic. the bands now. No. Yes. Uh, yeah, that's not going to happen. <laughs> no. uh, I agree with everyone. I have a straight 4.5. Yeah. All right, so we got we got four 4.5s. Are you going to mess uh, it Gia, up? what does that add up to? Let's see. If I want to be a little mm -hmm. contrary, then yeah. I have to do a whole lot of calculations in my brain, which is not that easy to do. I'll go with a 4.5. So it's a solid 4.5. Wow. It's a very right. good cigar. We yes. all like it. it is, yeah. And oh. I might add, this cigar is usually an excellent value. Usually. Yes. Usually. Mm -hmm. What did I retail this, for? This size cigar, 6x60, six is only five ninety five. Wow. So for under retail. $6, that's pretty right. good. Yeah. It retails for uh, per box like 119 bucks, somewhere around there. I feel something going on here. I feel something brewing. Well, Somebody's got an idea. I, uh, based on the response last week on the Rocky Patel Renaissance, yeah. mm -hmm. which they, uh, if you've ever seen Les Miserables, the storming of the Bastille, <laughs> was sort of like that yeah. in our stores last week. <laughs> I think we ought to try something like that again. Really? Oh, really? what do you think we should sell these for? 200 bucks. <laughs> That's Scott's That's line. Scott's That's line. his line. 300. <laughs> well, we're starting out at, what? Well, I'd go to $89. That's not bad. Scott? 88. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Rob? 87. <laughs> Ask me. Of, what do you think? 75. That, 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 would, that would be a really good price. That's about 40 yeah. off. Yeah, yeah. 
But I don't They're know. They're boxes of 20. By the bundles of 20, by the way. They're bundles of 20. Bundles of 20. Yeah, we saved the money a couple bucks on the boxes to bring them to you. So cheaper. 75, that's like... So, you, so what was the last 50, price? 75? 75. 75. That's that's 75, so that's giving them $45 off on a $75 box. Wow. Not bad. Yeah. Not bad. Good. But heck with all that. What you going to do? Uh-oh. 59. Nah. 55. Forty-nine ninety-five. Are you serious? Again? Wow. Two fifty for a six dollar six by sixty. That's a lot of wow. sixes. Wow. I'm buying. Two fifty. Forty-nine ninety-five for twenty great smokes. Wow, that's awesome. This is going to be my go-to smoke now. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, really. And a Gordo size? No, you can't. Well, Again, an unlimited supply, right? Good. Well, <laughs> limit five to a customer. Five bundles to a customer, and we'll run it till. April 15th again. Or until we run out of cigars. We'll run it till up to and including tax day, because we figure <laughs> by the run around tax day, you're going to need a good smoke. So yeah. this is a good smoke. Yeah, I'm hating on tax it's season a very good this year. Smoke. I like this forty nine ninety five. It gets you me You like that price? Yeah, 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 yeah. I like it. I like to create excitement. 50 bucks. I like to drive all our competitors crazy. Yeah. Well, that wow. will, that'll do it. I like well, that. They, they won't be showing that part of the show in other stories. Yeah, no. <laughs> I hope people are really stocking now remember, up their humidor now. You've got to go to our website, which is oh, right. cccigars.com. Look for the little coupon, bring it into the store on your smartphone, or just print it out and cut it out and bring it in. Remember, limit five. So I have to have the bundle. coupon or the phone. If you can find... A six by sixty quality great smoke for two fifty a piece anywhere else. You you let us know. We'll beat it. But this is a quality name brand. Alec Bradley is has been up and coming, is one of the major cigar forces in this country now for years. They put out a quality product and we're all very proud to sell it and you're gonna love smoking it. Especially if you're a lover of big sizes. Yeah, and like somebody said, Alex Bradley is not make course cigar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I mean, being you know, being now the, almost the middle of March, the weather's getting better, the golf courses are starting to see Let a couple... Let me ask you a question about the golf, when you're golfing and smoking. Do you put it down or you keep it in your mouth and smoke? I do, I put it down. You put it down? I have a bobkin that we sell, oh. those bobkins in mm -hmm. the golf cart, and I just stick it in there. Oh. It up. Howard, yeah. you know, Howard who works for us, mm -hmm. he puts it in his mouth while he swings. Really? <laughs> I have no idea how he does it, it's crazy. <laughs> you see him standing with the golf cart, yeah, he's hitting the wall. Yeah. I, we, how we do you should, do that? We should do a show on... Golf and cigar toys, okay. yeah, like the bobbin. Right. And, and yeah. there are so many neat things that golfers and cigar smokers need. Well, you know, the sure. next couple of shows, the, the, the guys are going to be at the driving range, starting to hit balls. That's true. And and more and more customers are going to be coming in. You'll be able to sit outside and smoke, sit on your deck, or just be outside, which is a quality time. God, the time flies by. Well, I guess it's uh, oh, wow. time wow. to bid adieu. Bid adieu. Me. Bid -adieu. Bye bye for now. Bye, Dad. Ciao for now, everybody. Bye, Mom. <laughs> Life is too short to keep smoking. Jesus. Damn. Jesus. You, better <laughs> you better stop hitting that muscatel. Yeah. <laughs> smoke cheap cigars. Paul? <laughs> smoke <laughs> off and then smoke hash. On behalf of all of us at Cigar Cigars, we want to thank you for viewing our program, and we look forward to coming into your homes every week. And come into our stores. Hey, you got a nice Don't forget, ass come too, to the stores Paul. too. TV, we're not Paul, Thank you. Nice we'll see too. you next week. <laughs> Thank you.